Hi students. We had learned about the different methods to produce polarized light in our last sessions. The three methods were polarization by reflection, polarization by refraction and polarization by double refraction. We had just begun what is the phenomenon of double refraction and we had not gone into the details of how we exactly produce plain polarized light using double refraction which we will be doing in today's session. Now once again we will revise what was double refraction. When a ray of light is incident on certain doubly refracting crystals or certain anisotropic crystals like calcite, quartz etc. The refracted ray inside the crystal splits into two. One refracted ray will be plane polarized with vibrations perpendicular to the plane of incidence and the other refracted ray will be plane polarized with vibrations parallel to the plane of incidence and this phenomenon is called double refraction. That is the light or a refracted ray kittunna dinu pagaram namukku rendu refracted rays kittunu ee rays inde pratheegatha endha chal ivu randaalum plane polarized aayirikkum onnil vibrations perpendicular to the plane of incidence plane of incidence anal plane containing the incident ray and normal appo adayidu ore ore case il oru ee rendu refracted rays il oru refracted ray plane polarized aayirikkum with vibrations parallel to the plane of incidence and randamatha refracted ray adum plane polarized enne aayirikkum pakshe adinde vibrations perpendicular aayirikkum plane of incidence inode appo ee phenomenon ne nammal double refraction ennu vilikkunu when you view an object through a doubly refracting crystal you get to see two types of images nammal oru vasthuvine oru doubly refracting Crystal and Ulil Kuda Nokia, Namka and the Therem image, Rand image object in the Rand image. When you rotate the doubly refracting crystal, one image remains stationary and the other image moves around the stationary image. The refracted ray responsible for the stationary image is called ordinary ray, and the refracted image refracted ray responsible for the other image that is the moving image is called the extraordinary ray. Now the ordinary ray has vibrations perpendicular to the plane of incidence and the extraordinary ray is plane polarized with vibrations parallel to the plane of incidence. Next what we are going to learn is some of the differences between ordinary and extraordinary rays. The, the first difference we have already learned that is ordinary and extraordinary rays are both plane polarized but ordinary ray has its vibrations perpendicular to the plane of incidence and extraordinary ray has its vibrations parallel to the plane of incidence. The second point of difference is that the ordinary ray propagates or moves with the same velocity in all directions. Inside a crystal, the ordinary ray moves with the same velocity in all directions, where the, whereas the extraordinary ray moves with different velocities in different directions. So that is the second point of difference. Because of their differences in velocities, the refractive index of the crystal for the ordinary ray that is we write we talk about the refractive index of the crystal we can talk about it either in terms of the velocity of the ordinary ray or in terms of the velocity of the extraordinary ray. Now the refractive index of the crystal mu in terms of the velocity of the extraordinary ray will be given by refractive index of the crystal is given by velocity of the light in air by velocity of light in the medium. So here it is C by VO. Now mu O will be a constant whereas mu E that is the index of the crystal in terms of the extraordinary ray or with respect to the velocity of the extraordinary ray will be 
C by V E. But V E is different in different directions. So mu E will also be different in different directions. So that is the third point of difference. That is the refractive index of the crystal for the ordinary ray is a constant. Whereas refractive index of the crystal for the extraordinary ray is different in different directions. Fourth point of difference is O ray obeys Snell's law. Whereas E ray does not obey Snell's law. So I hope the four points of difference is clear to all of you. First one, both O and E ray are plane polarized with the ordinary ray uh, having vibrations perpendicular to the plane of incidence. Extraordinary ray with vibrations parallel to the plane of incidence. Ordinary ray has the same velocity in the all directions whereas E ray has different velocities in different directions. Refractive index of the crystal for the ordinary ray is a constant whereas that for the crystal for uh, the E ray is different in different directions. Ordinary ray obeys Snell's law whereas extraordinary ray does not obey Snell's law. So these are the four points of difference. Now I want you to note two more extra points related to extraordinary ray. That is if this is my crystal and this is the optic axis of the crystal then if a ray of unpolarized light is incident along the optic axis then the ordinary and extraordinary ray will travel in the same direction with the same velocity along the optic axis along the optic axis the ordinary and extraordinary rays travel with velocity Direction. Our uh, optic axis will code up pass the ball, ordinary and extraordinary name, or a directional sanjirikino, or a velocity or goody. Adindarthamenda along the optic axis there will be no double refraction. For double refraction to be visible, there must be two refracted rays. When will you see two refracted rays? When the two rays travel with different velocities in different directions. Vetista the shagali liver ningel matrame namakin the gana betulu double refraction kana and sadikilu. Pakshe along the optic axis they travel with the same velocity in the same direction. That means they coincide. That is there is no double refraction. Whereas in a direction perpendicular to the optic axis they travel in the same direction but with different velocities. Averandalum ore the shales and jerikino but with different velocities. Ada either ore re adi medium. That means when they come out of the crystal, they will have a path difference. With this, the velocity will be one way to the other way. In a of time, it will be one way to the path difference. So, perpendicular to the optic axis, they travel in the same direction but with different velocities. We will note the two points. These are the two important points that you must note. That is, the ordinary along the optic axis, O ray and E ray travels with the same velocity in the same direction. Whereas, perpendicular to the optic axis, they travel with the uh, they travel in the same direction but with different velocities. Next, what you have to learn is hygiene's explanation for double refraction. Hygiene explained double refraction in terms of wavefronts. So, how did he explain? According to hygiene, now we know that inside an isotropic medium, an isotropic medium having same properties in all directions, properties like refractive index are the same in every direction. So, source in an isotropic medium gives rise to only one kind of wavefront. One light source produces other isotropic medium. On the other hand, a point source of light in a doubly refracting medium, if this medium is doubly refracting, then it will give rise to two types of wavefronts. Rand theorem wavefront in a producing or is or at a source than a epo other doubly refracting media till an akarakana dingle. Rand theorem wavefronts in the barnal, una it will be a spherical wavefront and the other one will be an ellipsoid of revolution. Spherical wavefront is due to the ordinary ray. Why? Because the ordinary ray travels with the same velocity in all directions. So, it will give rise to a spherical wavefront. Whereas, the ellipsoid of revolution will be due to the extraordinary ray because it will travel different, uh, travel with different velocities in 
different directions so it will give rise to an ellipsoid of revolution now hygiene told that along the optic axis both these wafers will touch each other അതായത് ഇതാണ് ഒപ്റ്റിക് ആക്സിസ് എങ്കിൽ ഒപ്റ്റിക് ആക്സിസിൽ നീങ്ങുമ്പോൾ ഈ രണ്ട് വേഫറൻസും ടച്ച് ചെയ്യുന്നു ടച്ച് ചെയ്യുന്നു എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ദർ വിൽ ബി നോ ഡബിൾ റിഫ്രാക്ഷൻ വേറാസ് അറ്റ് ഓൾ അതർ പോയിന്റ്സ് ബാക്കി ഏത് ദിശ കൺസിഡർ ചെയ്താലും ഇൻ ഓൾ അതർ ഡയറക്ഷൻസ് ദ ആർ സെപ്പറേറ്റ് നമ്മുടെ എലിപ്റ്റിക്കൽ ആൻഡ് സ്പെരിക്കൽ വേഫറൻസ് അന്യോന്യം കൂട്ടിമുട്ടുന്നില്ല മറ്റേത് ദിശ കൺസിഡർ ചെയ്താലും അതായത് ഇൻ ഓൾ അതർ ഡയറക്ഷൻസ് യു ഗെറ്റ് ഡബിൾ റിഫ്രാക്ഷൻ എലോങ് ദി ഒപ്റ്റിക് ആക്സിസ് ദി സ്പെരിക്കൽ ആൻഡ് എലിപ്സോയിഡൽ വേഫറൻസ് ടച്ച് ഈച്ച് അതർ സോ ദർ വിൽ ബി നോ ഡബിൾ റിഫ്രാക്ഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ഓൾ അതർ ഡയറക്ഷൻസ് ദി ഡു നോട്ട് ടച്ച് റിസൾട്ടിംഗ് ഇൻ ദിസ് വാസ് ദി എക്സ്പ്ലനേഷൻ ഗിവൺ ബൈ ഹൈജീൻ Double. Next is how do you exactly produce polarized light by double refraction? Double refraction in the method of the method, we have two refracted rays. One is the random plane polarized and with this the real plane polarized and the two refracted beam. But the method of producing plane polarized light ennu paranjal nammal oru vasthuil kude light ne kadathi vittu kaniyal namakku oru tharam plane polarized light e porthu veran paadullu nammada aavashya anusaramulla oru tharam plane polarized light ningal padichu in polarization by reflection when a beam of light is incident on a reflecting surface at the polarizing angle the reflected ray is plane polarized with vibrations perpendicular to the plane of incidence appa aa verunna reflected ray il oru tharam plane polarized light e ullu vibrations perpendicular to the plane of incidence ullad maatram adhe pole when you uh, uh, studied polarization by refraction you keep a set of glass slides and allow a beam of light to be incident on it the final ray which emerges out adana namakku ubagare pedunna ray ee 10 20 glass slide gal kaliñu porthu verunna refracted ray il adu it is plane polarized with vibrations parallel to the plane of incidence appo namakku ubayoge ക്കാൻ പറ്റുന്ന റേ ആരാണ് അതിൽ ഇപ്പോൾ അവസാനം പുറത്ത് വരുന്ന റിഫ്രാക്റ്റഡ് റേ അതിൽ ഒരു തരം വൈബ്രേഷൻ മാത്രമേ ഉള്ളൂ പ്ലെയിൻ പോളറൈസ്ഡ് വിത്ത് വൈബ്രേഷൻസ് പാരലൽ ടു ദി പ്ലെയിൻ ഓഫ് ഇൻസിഡൻസ് അതുപോലെ തന്നെ വെറുതെ ഒരു ഡബിൾ റിഫ്രാക്റ്റിംഗ് ക്രിസ്റ്റൽ കൂടെ ലൈറ്റിനെ കടത്തി വിട്ടാൽ നമുക്ക് രണ്ട് തരം റിഫ്രാക്റ്റഡ് റേസ് കിട്ടുന്നു അങ്ങനെ പാടില്ല ഫോർ പ്രാക്ടിക്കൽ പർപ്പസ് യു മസ്റ്റ് റിക്വയർ യു മസ്റ്റ് ഗെറ്റ് ഓൺലി വൺ കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് റിഫ്രാക്റ്റഡ് റേ ഐദർ പ്ലെയിൻ പോളറൈസ് പെർപ്പെൻഡിക്കുലർ ടു ദി പ്ലെയിൻ ഓഫ് ഇൻസിഡൻസ് ഓർ പ്ലെയിൻ പോളറൈസ്ഡ് പാരലൽ ടു ദി പ്ലെയിൻ ഓഫ് ഇൻസിഡൻസ് സോ ഹിയർ വാട്ട് യു ഡു ഈസ് യു ടേക്ക് എ കാൽസൈഡ് ക്രിസ്റ്റൽ two sections of calcite crystal cut in a special manner and joined together by what is called a canada balsam layer and this is called a nickel prism idine aanu nammal nickel prism nu paraya രണ്ട് സ്പെഷ്യലി കട്ട് കാൽസൈറ്റ് ലെയേഴ്സിനെ കാൽസൈറ്റ് ക്രിസ്റ്റൽ കഷ്ണങ്ങളെ നമ്മൾ കാനഡ ബാൽസം എന്നൊരു മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഉപയോഗിച്ചിട്ട് ജോയിൻ ചെയ്തു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ കിട്ടുന്നതിനെയാണ് നമ്മൾ നിക്കോൾ പ്രിസം എന്ന് വിളിക്കുന്നത് വെൻ ഓർഡിനറി ലൈറ്റ് ഇസ് ഇൻ such a nickel what happens is it will split in o and e o ray and e ray the o ray will undergo total internal reflection o ray ki total internal reflection nadakkunu adu ee crystal il ninnu remove cheyapadunu whereas the extraordinary ray will come out of the nickel prism and we can use it എക്സ്ട്രോർഡിനറി റേ ക്ക് എന്ത് സംഭവിക്കുന്നു അത് ഈ കാനഡ ബാൽസം ലെയർ കടന്ന് കാൽസൈറ്റ് ക്രിസ്റ്റൽ കടന്ന് ക്രിസ്റ്റൽ കൂടെ പുറത്തു വരുന്നു അങ്ങനെ നമുക്ക് ഉപയോഗിക്കാവുന്ന പ്ലെയിൻ പോളറൈസ്ഡ് ലൈറ്റ് എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ദിസ് പ്ലെയിൻ പോളറൈസ്ഡ് ലൈറ്റ് ദ ഈ റേ വിച്ച് കംസ് ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി നിക്കോൾ പ്രിസം Now, why does it happen like that? You have a calcite crystal here, a nickel, uh, canada balsam layer here and another piece of ca- calcite crystal here. Now, the refractive index of calcite with respect to the O-ray, that is mu O, is less than that of the canada balsam layer. That is, for the 
or a the canada balsam layer is a denser medium whereas calcite is a rarer medium so we know that when a ray of light incident at the critical angle when it passes through a, from a rarer to a denser medium it will undergo total internal reflection so my uh, ordinary ray undergoes total internal reflection whereas the refractive index of the crystal for the extraordinary ray is greater than that of the canada balsam layer so for the extraordinary ray end kaanunu it is passing from a uh, denser uh, to a rarer medium so it will not undergo total internal reflection and it will come out total internal reflection sambhavichu nammal ordinary ray ne ee അല്ല ഓർഡിനറി റേനെ നമ്മുടെ ലൈറ്റ് ബീമിൻ്റെ ഉള്ളിൽ നിന്ന് റിമൂവ് ചെയ്യുകയാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ആൻഡ് ദി എക്സ്ട്രാ ഓർഡിനറി റേ ഈസ് എമർജിങ് ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി നിക്കോൾ പ്രിസം സോ ദിസ് ഈസ് ഹൗ വി പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് പോളറൈസേഷൻ ബൈ ഡബിൾ റിഫ്രാക്ഷൻ സോ ഐ ഹോപ്പ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ക്ലിയർ ടു ഓൾ ഓഫ് യു ന വി ആർ കമ്മിങ് ടു ദ ലാസ്റ്റ് സെക്ഷൻ ഇൻ ദിസ് വീഡിയോ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് പോസിറ്റീവ് ആൻഡ് നെഗറ്റീവ് ക്രിസ്റ്റൽസ് നൗ the difference between the refractive index of the crystal for the extraordinary ray and ordinary ray that is mu e minus mu o is given as delta mu delta mu is also called birefringence magnitude depending on the delta mu we divide crystals or we divide doubly refracting crystals into two categories positive crystal and negative crystal if delta mu is positive we call it positive crystal if delta mu is negative we call it negative crystal okay so um, in a positive crystal delta mu is positive or mu e is greater than o and in a negative crystal delta mu is negative so mu e is less than mu o if mu e is greater than mu o that means mu e is equal to c by v e if mu e is greater means v e must be small okay so that means in a positive crystal v o is greater than v e if mu, they are inversely proportional so if mu e is greater than mu o means v o the velocity of the ordinary ray is greater in a positive crystal than the velocity of the extraordinary ray whereas in a negative crystal velocity of extraordinary ray is greater than the velocity of the ordinary ray because the velocity of the extraordinary ray is greater than that of the uh, of the ordinary ray is greater than the extraordinary ray when you draw in terms of wave front we find that if this is the crystal this is the optic axis then the spherical wave front lies outside the elliptical wave front in an in a positive crystal why because at the same instant the ordinary ray travels greater than extra ray because it has greater velocity so the spherical wave front lies outside the elliptical wave front in a positive crystal whereas in a negative crystal v e is greater than v o so what will happen the elliptical wave front lies outside and the spherical wave front lies inside at a particular instant the uh, elliptical wave front travels greater because e ray has greater velocity than the extraordinary ordinary ray the last point of difference is an example of these two positive crystal example is quartz negative crystal example is calcite so all these are very important portions as far as your exam is concerned i hope it is very to all of you so please go through the notes given and contact me if you have any doubts thank you